Opioids have improved the lives of millions of people around the world who are living with serious illnesses like cancer and suffering from acute pain. But they've also caused one of the deadliest drug crises in history, especially in the United States, killing almost 90 Americans every day over the past decade. And for many, those responsible for the crisis are not doctors, but rather the big pharmaceutical companies pushing their products with multi-billion dollar advertising campaigns. The truth is, prescription medicine is big business. Anytime you go to a doctor's office for anything, there's a pharmaceutical rep in there. They were actually marketing opioid pain medicine as being non-addictive. In 2013, nine out of the top 10 drug makers spent more on marketing than they did on research. In 2016, researchers estimated that medical marketing reached $30 billion, up from $18 billion in 1997. And in 2020, Americans spent close to $330 billion on prescription drugs. The seeds of the opioid crisis were sown in the mid-1980s when companies like Johnson & Johnson and Purdue Pharma began promoting prescription opioid medication like OxyContin and Oxycodone. Before long, doctors across the US were unknowingly prescribing a highly addictive drug to millions of Americans, resulting in a nationwide opioid crisis. And for many, what started with pills quickly became something much more sinister. I started with opioid pain medication, and it's cheaper to do heroin. All the lines and boundaries that I said I would never cross, I'll never do heroin. I crossed that line into heroin. I'll never shoot heroin. I'll never have an intravenous habit. You know, it didn't take long for me to cross that line as well. The road from an opioid painkiller, the end of that road is ultimately death. In 2014, stronger synthetic opioids like fentanyl began entering the drug supply in vast amounts. And a year later, something happened in the US for the first time in a century. Life expectancy entered a period of sustained decline. The cause? A surge of opioid drug overdoses and related suicides. I've lost a lot of people. Not everybody's an overdose, but you see more overdoses than you do suicides, and me especially. Um, it's it's hard because one second you're you're having a good time, and then the next time, the next thing you know, they're lying on the ground. Because of decades of opioid overprescription, an influx of cheap heroin, and the emergence of fentanyl the situation in the US has continued to deteriorate. But it's only recently that Americans have started to get angry about the problem. The search for solutions has spread in many directions, one of which is probing the legal accountability of companies who supply opioids to the prescription market. In 2019, an Oklahoma judge ruled that Johnson & Johnson intentionally played down the dangers and oversold the benefits of opioids and ordered it to pay the state $572 million in the first trial of a drug manufacturer for the destruction wrought by prescription painkillers. In October of the following year, Purdue Pharma agreed to settle with the US federal government for a sum of $8.3 billion to end the investigation into its role in the opioid crisis. Purdue Pharma, owned by the billionaire Sackler family, has since pleaded guilty to three criminal charges. The Mortimer Sackler family maintains that members of the Sackler families always acted ethically and lawfully, and that the proposed resolution involves neither a finding of wrongdoing nor an admission of liability by any member of the Sackler families.